And we are back. Happy Sunday if you are watching out there. We're just two Sundays away from just sitting back out on the couch and watching football for 10 plus hours. I cannot wait for it. I hope you can't too. If you saw yesterday's video, we talked about 10 players that I think are currently being overrated in fantasy football. 10 players that I think you guys should avoid. Today, we're doing the exact opposite. I'm picking 10 players that I think and I absolutely love at their current ADP or average draft position. These are guys I'm trying to snag in every single draft if I possibly can. Now click that subscribe button if you are new. My QB and running back rankings will be out tomorrow on Monday, followed by my wide receiver and tight end rankings on Tuesday. A lot more fun content coming your way. Daily DFS leagues. There's going to be a lot of content. So smash that subscribe button. Let's get into it. And I'm starting with my first player, Najee Harris. Currently being picked as the running back 11, pick 18 in fantasy football drafts. Now, I've been high on Najee all, all preseason, and I'll keep this one quick. I mean, you got him. He's going to be the bell cow, the workhorse back for the Steelers offense, and that always bodes well for fantasy football. Now, if you look in the past, the Steelers' lead running back has been a very fantasy-friendly person. Now, I know we've had a lot of injury history, and you think about James Conner. He was good for a short time span before he really got injured a ton every single year. But Le'Veon Bell, think back to those days. I mean, the Steelers, I think they want to get back to running the ball. If you saw them last year, they were chucking the ball 40 times a game, and that didn't end up working out in the postseason. I think this year will be a little bit different. Now, I do understand the question marks around his offensive line. They had a lot of turnover, people retiring left and right. I still do believe in this offensive line unit, but that's just not what, I mean, you think back to another rookie a couple years back, Saquon Barkley, and while I'm not comparing Saquon's talent to Najee Harris, Saquon Barkley, he had a lot of question marks for the Giants offensive line, and what did he do? He became the number one running back in fantasy football PPR scoring. Now, Najee Harris, talent's off the charts. The workload's gonna be there. This is a guy that can run, block, receive, do it all, and the Steelers wouldn't have used the first round pick on him if they weren't gonna just use him a ton. You saw him carry the load at Alabama. I think that'll be the case too. If you can get him as your RB2 on your team, maybe you go running back in your first two rounds, you're absolutely killing it. I do love Najee Harris. Don't mind him as my RB1 either. He's gonna be an absolute beast, and this will be the last year, I believe, that you'll be able to take Najee Harris outside of the first round in fantasy football. Another running back before we get into some receivers, Miles Gaskin, currently being taken, running back 26, pick 77. So Gaskin, Gaskin, he's been sliding down the draft boards. He used to be like RB21, maybe 15, 20 picks earlier, and he keeps sliding, and I just do not understand. I did a blind resume, and I'll give it to you right now while you're listening. Miles Gaskin last year, he played in 10 games last season and averaged 16.4 fantasy points per game, and like I said, he's getting drafted RB26. Now there's another running back out there, currently being drafted the ninth running back off the board in the first or second round, and he played 10 games like Miles Gaskin and averaged just 0.1, 16.5 points per game, as opposed to 16.4 for Miles Gaskin. Who's that player? Austin Eckler, that is. And so I'm not necessarily saying, you know, draft Miles Gaskin over Austin Eckler, or Austin Eckler will have less points than Miles Gaskin this year. I think people are just concerned about Miles Gaskin, I don't, and it doesn't make much sense. Now, I understand Malcolm Brown's involvement in the offense, but I'm not scared of him. He's not gonna be that explosive guy like Miles Gaskin is, and he's just gonna be that safe, reliable guy. Hey, if you don't want this guy to fumble and you want one yard, then fine, give it to Malcolm Brown. But Miles Gaskin, much more explosive, and I'm not scared of Malcolm Brown whatsoever. I mean, Gaskin has slid down draft boards because people saw what Malcolm Brown did in the first preseason game, and what did he do? He did absolutely nothing. That's why in the second preseason game, they said, yeah, we're not giving you the ball, Malcolm Brown, anymore. And what did Miles Gaskin do with the first team? He had six rushes, 27 yards, touchdown, and then another four receptions for 44 yards and another touchdown, just in like the first half, first couple drives playing with the first team. This is the Gaskin show. He's going to be absolute value running back 26. Yeah, I'll take it. There's no chance he finishes below. There's no chance 25 running backs score higher or more points than him this year, unless he suffers an injury, which we can't plan on that. Moving on to some wide receivers. Keenan Allen, currently being drafted wide receiver nine, pick 30. Now, if Keenan Allen comes to you, I'm sure you'll be taking him because of the talent that he is. But I want to just reiterate how love how I love this guy and why I think, you know, he's not a big, big difference from the top guys in like Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill. This guy is going to be off the charts this year. Now, Allen and then and the then rookie Justin Herbert had a great connection just out of the gates. I mean, Herbert wasn't supposed to start in week two, but he was thrust into the field. And if you look at it, excluding weeks five and fifteen in which Keenan Allen left due to injury which he still ended up playing, except for the last two games of the season. Keenan saw 10-plus targets in all but one game that he finished with Justin Herbert out there. He had a 29% target share, and it was clearly Herbert's favorite target. Now, if you look at Allen's target share or targets per year, 
2018, he averaged 8.5 targets a game. 2019, 9.3. And last year, 10.5 targets per game. This is going to be one of the best route runners in the NFL. And Justin Herbert's going to be throwing it a lot and getting him the ball in space. I mean, it, it's just, I mean, it's Keenan Allen. He's going to be a PPR monster. So if you're in PPR leagues, definitely get him if you can. He didn't have a, he does not going to have those long, long plays like a Tyree kill for 70 yard touchdowns. But this is a guy that will pile up eight to 10 receptions every single week. And you'll be seeing him in my player prop videos. I guarantee you that. Moving on to keep it on the trend with Allen's. We're going to transition from Keenan Allen to Allen Robinson, currently being taken wide receiver 11, pick 34. So going a couple picks right after Keenan Allen, which I believe is right. I do I do value Keenan Allen over Allen Robinson, which you'll see in my rankings, but Robinson saw the seventh most targets in 2020. It was his first ever season with 100 receptions. He finished with 98 the year before. He had 102 receptions last year, 1,250 yards, and six touchdowns, wide receiver nine in fantasy football. Now, this year, he's going to have better QB play. No offense to Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky. I do think that Andy Dalton and eventually Justin Fields will be better than those guys, at least in terms of getting the team in the red zone, giving them more scoring opportunities. And the difference between wide receiver nine which was Allen Robinson and wide receiver six last year, which is two touchdowns. So if he can go from six to eight touchdowns, boom, he's already almost a top five, borderline top five wide receiver in fantasy football. Last year, he saw 15 end zone targets. Just that was the third most in the NFL, which is absolutely insane. And he only turned it into six touchdowns. I think this year I'll see some positive touchdown regression, especially with Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. And this guy's a bona fide number one wide receiver, not only on the field, but also in fantasy football. He had double digit fantasy points in 14 of 16 games last season. Give me all the Allen Robinson in the late third and fourth round that I can handle. Moving on to another wide receiver going a little bit later. Wide receiver 15, Amari Cooper, currently picked 42. Now the ADP of Amari Cooper baffles me. I talked about this in my NFC East video where we talked about one player from every single team that I thought was being undervalued. And it's Amari Cooper. I mean, sure, his teammate, CeeDee Lamb, I, he was one of my breakout stars. If you watch my five breakout stars in fantasy football, CeeDee Lamb was in it. And he was like wide receiver 17 at the moment. Yeah, no, now he's all the way up to wide receiver 11, going a full 8 to 10 picks earlier than Amari Cooper. So allow me to remind you how good Amari Cooper was during the games with last season with Dak Prescott, because that's basically what people are doing with CeeDee Lamb. Now, through four games last season, Dak Prescott got injured in the fifth. Through four games, here are Amari's stats. 51 targets, nearly 13 a game. 37 receptions, 401 yards, and a touchdown. And on top of that, he was wide receiver one. No player in fantasy football had more fantasy points at wide receiver than this guy. He's had 1,000 plus yards in five of his six career seasons. He was wide receiver 10 in 2019, back when Dak was fully healthy that whole year. If you look at it, if you think of injuries are a concern, he's played 14 games once, 15 games once, and then four, all 16 games the other four NFL seasons. He's been pretty reliable. He's a true wide receiver one, and he's getting paid like it, so I think the Cowboys are going to use him. Give me Kamari Cooper at the ADP pick wide receiver 15. I don't think there'll be that many players in front of him. I mean, that's what he finished as last year, wide receiver 15 in fantasy football. And that was with Ben DiNucci and even Andy Dalton, who I do think will be better with the Bears. But still, not Dick Prescott. I'm in. My final four players will be a little deeper in drafts. We're going to talk about Robbie Anderson of the Carolina Panthers, currently being drafted wide receiver 30, pick 81. So very few people expected Robbie to just come out on the show last year. I mean, he was wide receiver 19, had five plus targets in every single game, and he's been reunited with his old quarterback from the New York Jets, Sam Darnold, who I guarantee you will have a good year because that's what it is like once you get away from the New York Jets. Now, he had a pretty nice preseason touchdown in the final week of the preseason, a back shoulder throw from Robbie, well, from Sam Donald to Robbie Anderson. And last season, Robbie Anderson was a beast. I mean, he had 95 receptions, a 26% target share, but he only had three touchdowns, and that was what limited his fantasy upside. And I do believe he'll have more scoring opportunities this year. Now, with CMC back, CMC will take some of that you know, the receiving work, which Mike Davis still took a ton of receiving work. So it's not necessarily like Christian McCaffrey's there. And there goes 25 targets for Robbie Anderson in game. But I do think you got Robbie Anderson. He's on pace, going to be on pace for another 85 receptions, 1,000 yards. And I think we'll get the five to seven touchdowns this year. It'll be a surefire top 20 wide receiver again. And he's being taken as wide receiver 30. Absolutely. Give me him in the eighth or ninth round. He's going behind guys like Jerry Judy, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kenny Galladay. All of these guys I don't like as much as Robbie Anderson this year. And I'm taking him. Give him the X jet to me. I'm all in. And he got paid this offseason. Props to him. Moving on to another wide receiver, Tyler Boyd, currently being drafted wide receiver 37, pick 99, right around that 9th, 10th, 11th round. Prior to Burrow going down last year, which Joe Burrow will be back this year, and I believe he's playing in the preseason game either today or tomorrow. And hopefully it looks all right. Boyd was wide receiver 11 over 
and he had over 16 fantasy points per game in the games where Joe Burrow was out there. Now, he had seven plus targets in eight of 10 games because Joe Burrow only played 10. So it's seven plus targets in eight of those 10 games. And those were the, the two games he didn't have seven plus targets were the only games he didn't have double digit fantasy points. Now, Joe Burrow, he's known to target the slot. He did it not only with Tyler Boyd last year, he did it with Justin Jefferson at LSU. And now you got Tyler Boyd sliding. Now I understand people are high on Jamar Chase, who's actually been sliding down draft picks and used to be going above T Higgins, but now is going below T Higgins. Maybe it's the drops out there. So now maybe Jamar Chase has a little bit more value, but this is a guy that's going a couple rounds after both of those guys. And I think he'll be much have a much higher floor than both T Higgins and Jamar Chase. When I mean, you think about you think about Tyler Boyd last in 2019, he was a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy football. I think he has a good chance to get back to that just because of the high floor. You think about their defense, it's going to be pretty bad. They're going to be throwing it a lot. And the offensive line, eh, you know, they addressed it a little bit, but still, I'm not, I'm avoiding Joe Mixon for a reason. And I think it's because they'll just now have a great offensive line. They'll be throwing it a lot. And I think a lot of those will be short passes to Tyler Boyd, not the deep guys like T Higgins and Jamar Chase going deep. Be a lot more kind of short slant routes that will be going to Tyler Boyd. I'm all in. The slot receiver for the Bengals will have a very good fantasy football season. Scoop him up in that ninth or 10th round if you can. Moving on to a QB before we get into my final deep sleeper, Jalen Hurts, QB 12, currently being picked 106. Now, I understand the criticism on Jalen Hurts. A lot of people say, you know, he can't play quarterback, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, if you look at his rookie year, he was used as a gadget player, and then they threw him into the fire for the final four games. And while he didn't necessarily look good from a football perspective, 52% completion, although a lot of those passes were deeper. They had a couple turnovers, interceptions, fumbles. Jalen Hurts, he was a good fantasy football quarterback, and that is the reason you're watching this video. Now, Kurtz, Hurts ran for 272 yards, three touchdowns over that for those four games span. He was the seventh best quarterback in fantasy football. Now, the sky is the limit for this guy, and I think he's a very hard worker, and I think this offseason, he has people, he has doubters to prove wrong. Like, people have been in my comments saying, I'm not drafting Jalen Hurts. I don't blame him. I mean, he's QB 12 for a reason. That's his ADP, QB 12, pick 106. But this is a guy that I think he's very committed to the craft and he's a hard worker. And I think the Eagles are committed to him. I mean, sure, they traded for Gardner Minshew to be their QB three, but I don't think they're in any rush to switch to Joe Flacco or Gardner Minshew, regardless of how good Minshew looks in training camp or preseason. He still has to learn the draft board. He just has to learn all the playbooks and whatnot. I'm not concerned about it. If you wait to take a quarterback, I think Jalen Hurts has the highest upside. He might have a lower floor than some guys like Justin Herbert or Ryan Tannehill, but Jalen Hurts will have some very good games. And will have a, I'll actually probably have a pretty high floor given the rushing ability of him and this offense. I think this offense will be better than people think. Devontae Smith, a real, real dark sleeper in fantasy football. I think he'll have a really good year. People seem to be down when they think he's going to be injured just because of his previous injury in the preseason. Absolutely not. Devontae Smith will be an absolute beast, and so will Jalen Hurts. Moving on to my final player, A.J. Dillon, currently being drafted, running back 36, pick 125. The last time I talked about A.J. Dillon was earlier this preseason. I talked about some deep sleeper running backs, and A.J. Dillon was on it. And he was being taken as the 40th running back. And I'm happy to see some people out there watching the videos. And he moved up to running back 36 off the board. He's still going in the same range as people like Rojo, Ronald Jones, Michael Carter of my New York Jets, and of course his former teammate, Jamal Williams. Now, I love the upside here with Dylan. It's for a couple different reasons. You're, you're talking about spending a pick in the 12th or 13th round on this guy. So not only one, he's probably one of the most valuable handcuffs in the NFL. Handcuffs being you're trying to take a star running back like Aaron Jones and find his immediate backup, and that is A.J. Dillon. And two, he's very talented. He's probably more talented than a lot of those backup running backs. This guy's legit. He's six foot tall, 250 pounds, and there's a reason. He's called the quad father, the quadzilla. He's a beast. He's much bigger than Aaron Jones. So would it surprise me to see him vulture in some touchdowns, which is what Aaron Jones' MO has been. She's been getting touchdowns. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I think he's the direct number two. Jamal Williams no longer in Green Bay, out in Detroit now. And that vacates 120 plus carries and a bunch of receptions. Well, I'm sure Aaron Jones will pick up some of those receptions. I think they'll use, use C.A.J. Dillon a little bit more in the run game than people might think. Now you think about his rookie year. He averaged 5.3 yards per carry on 46 carries. Didn't touch the ball, didn't tote the rock a lot, but he had one game that he had five plus carries in. And what did he do? 21 carries. 124 yards and two touchdowns. He was an absolute beast, and he's looked good this preseason. He was running all over my New York Jets in the preseason game, and this is a guy that will offer weekly value. Not only, you know, I think we'll have a, a pretty consistent floor in fantasy, but if something happens to Aaron Jones, this will be a top 10 running back easily in fantasy football. So scoop him up towards the end of the draft. He's been one of the best handcuffs and one of the people with the highest value. I prefer him. I would honestly, yeah, I, I think he's an absolute steal at his current ADP. I'm all in. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we're breaking down our QB and halfback rankings. So that will be a little questionable, but we'll have some fun in that video. So check that one out. A couple other videos popping up on the screen. I appreciate you guys. You've been absolutely killing it. Shout out to you guys for 7,800 subscribers. 
trying to hit 10K soon. We appreciate you guys. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.